I thought this story was absolutely crazy. This is courtesy of Daily Mail, right? And this kind of does show you, you know, why sometimes it does pay to be a woman. Being a woman, I know, in the world we live in now is very difficult. I understand there are terrors and, you know, fucking danger at every corner, especially and mainly from men. But there are some occasions where being a woman can be so advantageous. And this is a great example of it. Big up this story courtesy of the Daily Mail. The headline reads, Gangster's glamorous mole, 29, who ran drug trafficking racket peddling cocaine, ecstasy and ketamine to a party-loving friend is spared jail. The girlfriend of a drug dealer who pushed the drugs onto her work colleagues somehow doesn't go to prison. Can you imagine that happening to a dude if, the, if it was other way around? Come on, man. That's the, that's the luxury of being a fucking woman. Let's read the article itself and get some more information here. A glamorous recruitment specialist, which I've learned now, courtesy of some comments, allegedly the recruitment industry, they are big on cocaine. I've heard that allegedly. The drugs market and the drug scene in recruitment is crazy. Allegedly, I, I guess it's probably because it's high pressured, right? Because I guess if you're a recruiter, you probably have quotas you have to meet, right? So it's probably high pressured. Probably people are getting fired all the time. So when you want to let your hair down and you want to unwind, you want to fucking unwind. You want to fucking unplug. And what better way to unplug by drinking loads and doing a lot of drugs? So allegedly, I've heard from what I've been reading online that the recruitment industry has a lot of people who are super caners. After work, they get super fucking crazy. So let's read the article. A glamorous recruitment specialist who helped her gangster boyfriend run his drug racketing, oh, sorry, his drug trafficking empire by peddling cocaine, ecstasy, and ketamine to a party loving friend has been spared jail. Uh, Pavindip Nijar, 29. Oh, she's a bit of a cute, isn't she? Look at Pavinda. Look at Pavinda. Look at Pavindip. Pavindip, sorry. Pavindip is a fucking hottie, isn't it? Look at her. Um, and you'd never guess that she was a fucking girlfriend of a fucking drug, of a, of a drug dealer, would you? She looks fucking innocent, sweet, cute. You would never guess that she has a couple baggies in her handbag. You'd never guess in a Chanel fucking handbag that she has a couple bits of cat, a couple bits of MD, a bit of Coke, some pills, maybe a little ounce of weed here and there if you need it to come down. Like, she'll hook you up. She'll sort you out. Nice. Uh, Pavindip Nijar. A former fashion buyer for Sir Philip Schofield. So no, for Sir, for Sir Philip Green's now defunct Arcadia Group. Wow, she used to work for the Arcadia Group. I might actually know people that know her, to be fair. Because I've got a lot of friends that used to work for that um, now defunct um, fashion group that also owned fucking, what's it called? Um, Topshop and shit. Wow. Organized packages of drugs for her hedonistic social circle using underworld associates of her gangster boyfriend, Charlie Jacob. Okay. Charlie Jacob sounds like a dealer, right? Charlie Jacob. We all we all know of a Charlie that we grew up with, you know, who was on the fucking bad boy thing. So Charlie sounds like a dealer, but you would never assume a Charlie Jacob would be dating a va a, pa a Pavandeep Najjar. I'm not gonna lie. I always assumed Indian girls or Pakistani girls didn't really like white boys. I don't know why I thought that, but I always assumed it was the other way around. I always assumed Indian Pakistani boys liked white women. You see with those videos, whenever like blondies go to like Bangladesh or whatever, right? It's fucking crazy, right? They're like, they're like, they might as well be fucking Lady Gaga in the streets. Do you know what I mean? People are running after them, trying to touch them and shit. Like, you know, Indian Pakistani men love white women, but I never thought it was the other way around. I never thought they liked, you know what I mean? But yeah, it's different here. Let's continue. Um, between 2019 and 2022, Nijar, known as Pav, um, was said to have tra uh, treated cocaine and ecstasy like a shopping commodity. The judge at Manchester Grand Court compared her activities to a shopper going to a supermarket asking friends, does anybody want anything? Yes, Pav. Big up, Pav. Pav, wherever you are, bang your fucking doors, Pav. You did nothing wrong, Pav. You did fucking nothing wrong. Um, the university graduate, she graduated university too. She's a university graduate. She's got her own job. She makes her own money and she sells some gear on her side. What's the problem? What's the fucking problem? Leave her alone. She sells some gear on her side and she, you know, she she makes a job. She pays her taxes. What's the issue here? Leave her alone. Leave Pav alone. Um, the university graduate's involvement was uncovered when police arrested 27-year-old Jacob over a 40,000 pound shipment of MDMA. Yo, 40,000 of MDMA. Because MDMA is pretty cheap from what I've heard, right? <laughs> from what I've heard. So imagine how much profit they, they must be making from 40K. Because that's a lot of MDMA. You're probably getting, that's like tons of MDMA. So imagine what the profit margins are like. Maybe they're making back, what, 200 grand? Half a million? 
God damn. Um, because these 40,000 um, shipment of MDMA, which was intercepted by border force officers. They continue. Oh, this, there. See, look at Charlie Jacob. A nice looking bad boy, white boy. Of course, he's got the fucking Under Armour top on. He's got that haircut that all dealers like. This looks like every dealer I've ever met in my life. They all kind of look like this. <laughs> yeah, what do you want? What do you want? What do you need? What do you need? Yeah, what's good, my guy? What's good, my G? What do you need? What's the motive? What's the motive? <laughs> what do you, what do you, hold on, hold on. One sec, one sec, one sec. Let me get around the corner. Let, let me, let me go around the corner. Let me go around the corner. Do you know what I mean? This looks like every fucking dealer I've ever met in my entire life has looked like a, a variation of this kind of white guy, right? Whether they're Albanian, whether they're black, they always kind of have a variation of this. Do you know what I mean? I love it. I love it. Um, it continues. Najjar's phone was examined during the investigation into Jacob and was found to contain incriminating messages that she exchanged with friends, including one that said, Chels, any coke for tomorrow? Ah, uh, yes, Pav. Pav is sorting out the coke deals on her fucking main line. She hasn't even got, she hasn't even got a second phone. She's doing on her main blower. She's fucking doing the coke deals. You gotta love the flagrancy of this. During the exchange, Chels responded and said, not for me, but Mark may want a line. <laughs> she's giving out lines. She's selling baggies. You gotta love Pav. She's one of the best dealers you ever fucking know. To be fair, I do remember there was a time, I don't think this person exists anymore, but there was a time where this like teenage girl was the dealer of like a lot of people that I went out partying with in like the East London area. She used to ride a bike. Those of you that go out around there, you would know who I'm talking about. It was this little girl that used to be riding a bike with a backpack and she was the one that was delivering drugs and shit. It's kind of, it's kind of wild to think about it that people were buying drugs off a literal teenage girl, but it was quite cute to see. She pull up in a little pink bike with a pink backpack. I'm assuming most of it was obviously to evade police probably stopping her, but she'd have like mad drugs in her little backpack and then kind of unload them out. It looked like a, a scene from a movie, but yeah, if you know, you know. It continues. Um, she sent another message whilst on holiday in Croatia. She's even doing deals while she's in, on vacation. That is that fucking immigrant work ethic. Big up Pav. Um, she was sending another message while on holiday in Croatia in which she placed an order for herself and her friends telling the dealer, can we have five bags of Coke and three bags of Ket? Yo, they wanted to party with a capital P. They wanted to fucking get down. They wanted to boogie. They wanted to shake a leg. You know what I mean, they wanted to bust that bussy open. Five grams of coke and three bags of cat. Shit. That isn't some minor thing. That's people wanting to rave. That's people wanting to go out. Like, let's go outside. Let's do something. You know what I mean? Let's party. Let's have a good time. None of this. Rah, rah, rah. Nah, bro. Let's go out for real, for real. Okay? 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 Yeah, cool. Anyway, continues. Um, she also placed orders ahead of her social circle, um, going to a music festival. That's standard, though. Everyone does that, though, right? Everyone. I don't think that's a bit unfair. I think everyone's got a friend in their group who who buys the drugs for them when they're going to a festival or when they're going to a party, especially if you don't usually buy drugs. If you don't usually buy drugs, it's not your thing, but you might do it here and there on a special occasion. You don't know anybody else you're going to buy it from. So you're obviously going to go to your most druggy friend and get them to buy it for you. But you can't then label that person a fucking dealer. I guess technically you could, but you, come on. They're not fucking Pablo Escobar. They're just ordering a couple of grams and maybe making some beer money on top. That's not a fucking dealer thing. Like People need to fucking relax. You know what I mean? Maybe relax. Um, <laughs> let's continue. Um, her gangster boyfriend lived a lavish lifestyle um, from his own drug dealing in with holidays in Amsterdam, Dubai, and America, as well as stays in luxury hotel. That's a very much a UK way of a trap dealers moving around, right? Amsterdam, Dubai, and America. Like this guy couldn't have gone to the Seychelles. He could have gone to fucking Dominican Republic. He could have gone to parts of Africa. He could have gone to Bali. Nah, let's go to America, Dubai, and fucking Amsterdam. Like, come on, man, you got to do more with your drug dealing money. Uh, have bragged of going to Miami and Ibiza and enjoying a glass of wine on the beach. When quiz Pav, who lives in a three hundred thousand dollar a pound apartment in Manchester, how does she? Oh my God! This is what I love about people who are smart. So this this little cute Asian girl, right? She was peddling some drugs for her boyfriend. Instead of just buying nonsense stuff and trainers, she got herself a three hundred thousand pound apartment in Manchester. 
Because how else, how else is a woman that works for recruitment going to afford that kind of flat? Of course she's dealing drugs. But she was smart. She got herself a property first so that she's, you know, she's sorted out. So even if she does go to prison, she's got a house to come back to. That was smart. That, that's the difference between men and women, to be honest. She was just doing, she was selling, she was basically reselling drugs for her boyfriend, right? Or making a bit of money on top. She wasn't really like shipping anything in herself. And she was able to still, even with that reselling money, which is not much, she was still able to buy a house. But us boys, what's the first thing a boy would do? Buy an AP, buy a Rolex, buy a Richie Millie, uh, buy a new car, um, loads of white Air Force Ones, Nike tech suits, Dior belts, Alix, you know, um, Dior fucking jackets, North Faces. But she was smart and she bought a house. That is what you need to do. Good girl, Pav. Pav is a fucking good girl. I want to see her on fucking... Um, I want to see her on those shows, mate. On Dragon's Den or something. Um, let's continue here. When quiz Pav, who lives in a 300,000 apartment um, in Manchester's trendy Northern Quarter, admitted drug dealing, but insisted she made no profit from the racket. Yeah, right. She said, My friends and I would go out drinking and clubbing very frequently, and this included recreational drug use. I accept that there were times when I took responsibility for purchasing drugs for these occasions, and this is shown in the text messages from my mobile phone, but I did not go further than this. Ah, so she snitched a little bit. She kind of snitched, but she also clarified that, hey, I'm just a party girl looking for a fun time. I'm just having a... F we're just girls. We're just hanging out, having a fun time, you know? Big up, Pav. Big up. For Look, you would never guess that she has a fucking baggie in her fucking bag. You'd never guess she has a little cheeky eight ball. You would never fucking guess. Look how innocent she looks. Jesus. Um, Pav pleaded guilty to being concerned um, in the supply of cocaine, of MDMA and ketamine, but insisted she was now leading a completely different lifestyle. Of course. Women get a chance to change. Of course women can change their lives and turn it around. But can a man do it? Of course not. Ah, uh, Of course she can change her life. She was given a two-year jail sentence, suspended for 23 months. Wow wow she got let off for basically selling drugs because she admitted it and probably snitched on her boyfriend fuck man fuck free charlie um which is you know a bit of a whatever um you know double entendre it continues she was um sentencing judge mark saville told pav you're a woman not only lacking in precious sorry you're a woman not only lacking in previous convictions but you're absolutely positive character <laughs> Look at her. The judge even got gassed. Mark got fucking stunned by her beauty. Even Mark, the judge, got fucking bedazzled by her beauty. You're, you're basically a perfect woman apart from the drug dealing. Apart from the dealing in, a, in illicit class A substances, much of which are incredibly destructive and much of which come with a lot of pain and suffering and blood on the back end, you're absolutely a lovely person. <laughs> what? She's a drug dealer, mate. Come on, man. You're perfect in every way, apart from selling drugs to people who are in the worst position possible, leading them down to addiction and, you know, <laughs> destroying families. But you're a lovely person. You're perfect in every way. Yo, Judge Mark, you are fucking going crazy, bro. Where's Judge Mark? Um, Judge Mark said, you're a woman not only lacking in previous convictions, but you're an absolutely positive character apart from this. I have also read the previous, sorry, the pre-sentence report, which shows you had you to be an intelligent, hardworking, insightful, and remorseful individual. Is that all it takes to escape prison time? Just to be remorseful? Just say you're sorry a bunch of times. Show that you're, you know, trying to be a positive representation or positive person in your neighborhood, and they're going to forget all of that fucking nonsense that you did. All of the selling of class A's, all of the illegal importation of the drugs, where it came from. We're going to forget that. Because you, because you said sorry and you cried. Come on, man. Jacob's was... Oh, my God. Look at this. Jacob, the boyfriend, was jailed for 10 years. 10 years. Because he admitted to conspiracy to supply cocaine, ketamine, cannabis, and MDMA. He gets 10 years. She gets two years suspended for 23 months. No jail time. He... Oh, man. Life is not fair. 10 years. And she's out having a good time. <laughs> Inquiries revealed a receptionist who worked at, at the Great Manchester Police Digital Investigation Unit had been tipping off Jacob. And he's, wow. This Charlie was in deep. 
Inquiries revealed a receptionist who worked at the Greater Manchester Police Digital Investigation Unit had been tipping off Jacob and his accomplices, warning them they were being investigated by detectives and not to use Snapchat. So this Jacob guy had a fucking person on the inside of the police. Yo, he was a big deal, wasn't it? How did she get away with it then? She was actually dating a, a legit drug dealer, not like somebody pushing a couple of eight balls. He was importing 40 thousand pounds worth of mdma into the uk that got seized so he was pushing major drugs up there in manchester and she was the boy she was the girlfriend also pushing her drugs to her colleagues but she gets no jail time now nah, that's not fair that's not fair border force officers intercepted the parcel from netherlands addressed to the property jacob rented in denton the package appeared to contain a cat food but it was found to hiding a haul of mdma tablets you know hiding tablets in fucking cat food is hilarious police raided the rental property and found 28 cannabis plants growing inside before turning up at jacob's home in nearby uh Droylsden in december 2021 where they arrested him and found pav uh, in the upstairs bedroom oh my god i thought they broke up or something they found Pav sleeping upstairs, probably after getting, you know, dicked down, having a good time, getting her back blown out by her boyfriend, chilling out, watching something on the iPad, watching something on the iPhone, showing her boyfriend a fucking meme, like most girls do, fucking around, right? They found her in the bed with probably a couple of eight balls in her handbag, and they still, she got no jail time. This is hor horrible. Um, initially, Pav refused to engage with police or provide details. Shh, oh my she even she even refused to cooperate and then oh my god <laughs> admitted she had been Jacob Griffin and stayed the night at the house she eventually handed over the phone and password to it examination revealed that she was recreational user of controlled drugs and was involved in the social supply of these substances with several Jacob's known drug contacts Pav was arrested in a flat in 2022 in July after locking herself in a bathroom when police burst in <laughs> that's such a girl move isn't it that's such a that likes it reminds you of, she probably hid in the bathroom like that scene in fucking um euphoria right that scene in euphoria which is hiding in the bathtub like that's how she probably hid in the, in the bathroom another mobile phone was seized and contained the messages um where she's where she still sorted drug orders by instructing her friends to not mention them in any group chats bloody hell man pav pav the beauty pav the big girl managed to not get any jail time because she's cute because she's hot have got no jail time because she cried and because she wooed the judge with her eyes and the eyelashes <laughs> honestly being a woman has its you know has its negatives but it definitely has its positives so uh big up pav uh free charlie wherever you are brother free you 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 come out you know 10 years is fucking brutal hopefully you get out on good behavior and um, yeah like what a crazy crazy situation honestly you cannot you cannot flip in line that that is not a crazy situation. So big up her, big up them. What can you do? What can you do?